Hi and welcome to this video. I developed an air football and I'm about to guide you how to build one for yourself that ends up looking something like this. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is go to the bottom of the page and download all the files I provided. Besides these files, I also want you to download and install the free software Nextgen Editor as this will be used to upload the setup to your Nextgen display. You can find the link to their website under the first step. With all the downloading in place, it's time for some 3D printing. Go to the 3D print folder and unzip it to get access to the STL files. If you don't want to use my files straight away, but rather get some experience by drawing the parts yourself, like I personally did in SOLIDWORKS, you can use the technical drawings as reference. Next step is to import the STL files into a slicer that matches your 3D printer. I personally used an Ultimaker printer and therefore Ultimaker Cura as slicer. All the parts are designed for 3D printing, but make sure you orient them in a suitable way and maybe add some brim to some parts like the corners so they don't fall over during printing. Additionally, I recommend you to use 10% infill as this is a good balance between print time and sufficient strength. When you have prepared all the files and exported the decodes to removable disks, it's time to start the prints. The boundaries must be printed in a light color so the transparency is high enough to let the light through, but you can choose whatever color you prefer for all the other parts. Okay, so the third step is to laser cut the frame and the game board. Unzip the folder and open the SVG files in a vector graphics editor, for example like Adobe Illustrator. If your laser cutter accepts RGB red and cutting line thickness on 0.01, you can send the files to your cutter right away. If not, you must edit the line color and the thickness. I recommend you to cut everything in plywood besides the game board top. I used acrylic for this one as it has a smoother surface and therefore provides a better floating of the puck. Lastly, make sure you cut in the right thickness by double checking the technical drawings. If your laser cannot cut the right thickness, just cut the parts multiple times and glue them together afterwards. To cover the frame I decided to use stickers. If you also have access to a sticker machine and it's specifically from Roland, you can unzip the folder and export the EPS files without further ado. If the machine is different, you need to open the files and adjust them to your printer's settings. And if you don't have a sticker machine at all, don't worry, you'll just keep it as it is or paint it in your own cool way. Thank you. 
Next step is to paint the game board nicely so it ends up looking like a football field. Start with painting the game board green. You might have to paint it a couple of times before the wood is covered sufficiently and you might also have to put for example a nail through some of the holes you closed with paint. After it's dry, you can start sketching the white lines. Before painting these, I recommend you to apply painter's tape to achieve perfectly straight lines. Now it's time to assemble the game board. Begin with gluing the lists together if you made them in separate pieces to achieve the right thickness. When they're dry, assemble the rest of the game board with glue. If the painted top is bending a little, you might have to put some small pieces of wood around the middle like I did to keep a flat game surface. I recommend you to put some heavy on top when it's drying, so the ceiling gets good and therefore the airflow better. With the game board ready, next task is to assemble the frame. You can do this with super glue or some other glue which sticks to both wood and plastics. From own experience, remember to double check that the sides and the corners are oriented correctly before you start gluing. It's also a good idea to check if the game board fits within the frame before gluing the last side. Ok, now it's time to do some soldering so the wire connections to the components becomes permanent. Start out with the LED strip. You need to cut it in a length of 56 pixels if you used the same type as me, which is defined as 30 pixels per meter. Be furthermore aware that you must put the wires through the side of the frame before you solder them to pin headers and the external power supply. Next up is the Arduino shield. If you have a pre-assembled one with at least 6x 5 volt pins and 7x ground pins, you can skip this part. If not, you will have to make one for yourself, like I did. The specific type of shield is an essential as long as it provides the minimum of 5 volt pins and ground pins. With the LED strip and the shield ready, you can solder the rest of the components. Do yourself a favor and be consistent in the usage of the wire color as it later makes the assembly of the circuit easier. If you have any heat shrinkable tubing, I also recommend you to use this to protect the solderings. Next step is to attach the boundary. 
Don't glue the boundary to the frame, but instead use some double-sided tape so you always can get access to the strip if something fails. When the boundary is complete, flip the frame around, place the LED strip carefully in the gap around the frame and stick it to the boundary by peeling off its tape. It's time to place the game board in the frame. Do this by first placing the acrylic on top of the game board and fix it with for example nails so it doesn't slip when you flip it around. Okay, now flip the frame upside down and place the game board so it's supported by the boundary. To fix the game board in the frame, glue some list or scrap wood to the bottom of the game board and the frame. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it can support the game board. Let it dry for at least 24 hours before you flip the product back again. With the main construction assembled, you can start attaching the stickers and if you didn't have the possibility to print some, then personalize the sides in your own way. If you're using stickers, I recommend you to have something nearby that you can smooth out the stickers with. Next step is to attach the sensors and actuators in their mounts. Start with mounting the button in the next gen display as shown in the video, but be careful not to break the snap fits when you mount the display. Additionally place the line trackers in the slideways and be careful not to damage the sensors. Okay, it's time to upload code to both the display and the Arduino. Begin with uploading the setup to your next gen display. This can be done with two different methods, but start with unzipping the NextGen folder and open the HMI file. In here you must check if the selected device is correct before you start uploading. The first method and the one I recommend is to use the display's SD port as this without doubt is the fastest. You do this by first exporting the setup as a TFT file and place it on an empty micro SD. If the SD contains other files than this, the uploading might fail, so double check this before you start it. With the TFT file ready, you can insert the SD in the display, connect its 5V and ground pin to your Arduino and power it on, as this will start the uploading. When the upload is completed, disconnect the Arduino, remove the micro SD and connect the Arduino again to see the uploaded display. If you don't have a micro SD, you must use the second method. For this you need an empty Arduino, so if you used your Arduino in a previous project, start with uploading an empty code. After this, connect the display to the Arduino's TX and RX port and of course the 5 volt and ground port. And then you start the uploading of the NextGen setup by pressing the upload and go in the HMI file. Shortly after the uploading will start. As I mentioned earlier, the uploading is far slower with this method, so be patient. The final step before you can start playing is to attach the still missing components and assemble the electrical circuit. Begin with attaching the fan, flip the table and place the rest of the parts with double sided tape so you also here can get access to the electrical components if something fails. Before you assemble the circuit, I recommend you to have an extra look at the circuit schematic so everything is attached correctly. Lastly, be aware that the LED strip can't handle more than 5 volts. If you exceed this voltage limit, the strip will get damaged.
the only things left to do now is to plug in the external power supply, turn on the Arduino and the fan and you're ready to play. Thank you so much for watching, I'll hope you'll have a great time with both building and playing.